Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Brick Thompson. I'm Caleb Oaks. Caleb, we wanted to talk today about uh, where generative AI analytics is. Sort of the expectations you and I had, and I think a lot of people had, maybe, well, for us, it really kicked into high gear in May of 2023 when we were at the Microsoft Build Conference and they showed Copilot for Power BI. And it seemed like some pretty amazing stuff was right around the corner. Mm -hmm. um, and where we are now, what we're seeing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I even remember we were all pumped about it before that with just ChatGPT3, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. We even built some stuff. Um, or at least I did. I built that like email thing where it would yeah. take your DAX query and it would analyze it for you or the output from your DAX query to analyze the result. And then it would give you a like a, a readout of like what happened over from this week to last week. And it would give you some um, recommendations on what to do in your business to correct whatever might be going wrong. Right. <clears throat> um, so anyway, that, all that to say, we were all super pumped about it. And then the Microsoft conference was like, holy crap, this stuff's moving super it's fast. Here. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and now here we are. So where yeah. are we at? Yeah, so here's where I think we're at. Um, you know, I, I don't work in the AI field, but I follow it closely. I mean, we're an analytics company, data analytics company. I look at every commercial tool that I can find that's coming out. And so far, what I'm seeing has been pretty disappointing. And it's been pretty similar now for, I don't know, nine, 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, there are tools, people are uh, creating tools to write SQL and to bump up against data sources and hopefully have a good semantic layer so it can give you a good answer. Uh, what I was finding you know, a year ago and what I'm still finding now is that the results are unreliable. It takes a lot of work to actually get something that might be even close to reliable. It feels very bleeding edge to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our our hope was that this would finally bring analytics to natural language query for regular business folks. You wouldn't have to know SQL and analytics much. Um, and just not seeing that. I mean, you've got to really be able to debug and be good at figuring out if the results you're seeing are any good. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, I haven't stayed as close to it as you have, but um, I think that the same adage goes, right? Garbage in, garbage out. You're still going to get bad stuff out if you don't have good data underneath it. And then you also think about even if you do have good data underneath it, these models still have are prone to error here and there, right? And as soon as you have some some bad answers come back, there's just, then the trust is gone. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not quite ready for – for a consumer yet. Definitely right. not. Yeah. And this is what I'm talking about is and we're, what we're talking about is different from machine learning, mm -hmm. which definitely is a lot more established. And there are data scientists that know how to use machine learning to do good uh, predictive analytics. But this is more the LLM style. I can ask a question. It'll go out and do some analysis and come back and give me a good answer. Mm -hmm. And it seems like what it's going to take to get there is some new advance and some of these LLM tools, maybe maybe some different approach that they take to dealing with numbers and so on. Even the most advanced, you know, quote, frontier models like Claude 3.5 and, and ChatGPT 4.0 um, still make really dumb mistakes when it comes to asking them questions that have to do with numbers. Sometimes they get it right. And ChatGPT sometimes will blow you away by writing a little Python program to solve what you were looking for and get the right answer, but they often just get it wrong. And so I think there's going to have to be something fundamentally different. And I don't know if that's going to come with, you know, ChatGPT 5 or or some intermediate thing or some branch off of what we're seeing now that adds some technology to make it work well. But I think yeah. we're going to need to see that, number one. And then number two, I think we're going to have to think hard about that semantic layer, the data model that you put on top of the data that you've got so that whatever tool you have is definitely asking for the right results. Yeah. And I think that's harder than maybe people think. Yeah, I mean, it still takes a lot. So I, there was a tool, um, I was going to give them a, a shout out to all our listeners, but I can't remember, I'm, spacing, I'm blanking on their name. <laughs> You'll um, come up with it. <laughs> anyway, I that I tried probably early last year. Um, it was a natural language query thing. I think I shared it with you at some point. Um, 
and that's how you had to do it. Like I did a free trial and I kind of like tried it out. You had to take your data, you had to load it into this platform. You had to define the columns, you had to define the relationships, you had to basically build a semantic model so this tool knows what it's looking at. Um, and then you were able to ask it some questions. It worked okay, but it still t it was a ton of overhead to get that thing set up. Yeah. Um, and then to troubleshoot it and debug it. And then, um, you know, you're going to have to keep a, yet another piece of, you know, software up to date with current data. Like, and that has all of the challenges of, of building a data platform. Like, what do you do with deletions? How do you update stuff? Do you only do differentials? Do you do full load? Like, how often does it update? Like, you have all those things. And yet another tool like that, that sucks, you know? Yeah. So you're, uh, you know, I think you're right that that's going to be, uh, that is going to be a very foundational piece. And honestly, I think that that architecture that I just described is what we're going to see next. Um, maybe become popular, maybe not. Um, but then, you know, maybe on the other side of that is when we'll start seeing something that's that doesn't have those problems. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree with you. I think for a while, though, there's going to be a lot of work around the data wrangling and, and the rules you're talking about, but also just the interface of the business. So, you know, you've set up a semantic model on whatever you were testing there and were able to make it work. But if you had handed it to me, I might have used the wrong words or used words that it interpreted, you know, correctly, but not what I was looking for because of how you set it up. I mean, right. there's there's going to be a lot to figure out there. Yeah, 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 you're right. It's kind of like, uh, do you remember that chart? There's like a a line chart where it shows like a, a trigger of new technology and then it's like this super inflated expectations of what this right. technology is going to do and then and then after that it goes into this what they call the trough of disillusion right. and, um, <laughs> where, where, where everybody's that, like yeah. now it's not living up to the expectations of this thing sucks and then it kind of flattens out and you find like okay now here's the usefulness of this thing yeah um i feel like we're we're at least I'm probably in that trough a little bit. Like, okay, yes. yeah. Like, I've seen too many problems that it's like, I don't know. You know, I kind of need to need to get to that plateau of like, all right, here's how this thing is actually gonna gonna work. Yeah, I think I'm in the same place. I still use LLMs, the Frontier models, every day mm -hmm. because there are use cases where it actually is quite helpful to brainstorm and to outline things and. You know, the hardest thing for me in writing is starting with a blank page, and it can help you with that. You can at least get you started. Uh, but I think there is that trough happening. I, I happen to believe that, you know, there's still a sleeping giant there, and it's going to be, you know, world-changing. It, it already is, but it's going to be massively world-changing. You know, I'm reading articles now coming out from, you know, big consulting firms saying, well, it's not living up to the hype. It's going to have to deliver, you know, X hundred billions of revenue to be worth what people what companies are spending on building this stuff and so on i think that's right right now but i think it's the technology scales and improves i believe it'll get there i just don't know when do you think there's gonna have to be like a re-architecture like i think a while back we talked about again the llm just inherently its architecture may have to just almost be rebuilt like it's a totally different technology that's going to move it for, forward move ai forward like are we at the are we closing in on what an llm can do i guess is another way to talk Ye about it yeah well what do you think and then i'll tell I you i kind of feel like it is going to require something like that yeah like it's going to have to a large language model may have a role in it but it's not going to be the fundamental piece um right with you there so i think that large language model will be a piece of the equation and there's going to have to be stuff that I don't know if it's bolted on or, <laughs> or somehow grafted in there, but there's going to be other stuff to make sure that it can do really good logical thinking when it comes to numbers and math. And, you know, maybe some of these agent type architectures that people are talking about will help with that. Um, that would be my guess. You know, I'm reading that some of these frontier model companies, you know, OpenAI, Anthropic, those guys, um, they think there's some runway left in LLMs in terms of continuing to scale them. So, you know, the more data you put in there, the better they get. But I do think it's going to hit a wall. That would just be my mm -hmm. layman's guess. Um, and you're going to have to add other stuff to it to make it work well. I mean, at some point, you can't afford to train these. I mean, they, you know, last round of Frontier models, I think, cost, I don't want to overstate it, it was either $100 million, 
think it was 100 million to train, and they think this next round is costing a billion. And you know, there's you can sort of exponentially see like, okay, to get to the ultimate yeah, right. power, it's going to take 100 billion. You know, it just doesn't work right. uh, economically unless it really does break through. And now you've got AGI or ASI and. I tend to agree with you. Just guess that there's going to have to be some other things. And I'll bet they're working on those. Yeah, you're probably right. All right. All right. Well, interesting topic. We'll yeah, see. It'll be interesting I think to see. My prediction in May of 2023 was we'll start seeing some really useful stuff by the end of the year, 2023, maybe first quarter. That didn't happen. I don't have a new prediction now, but I bet you it's not in 2024. Um, and I'd be surprised if it was in 2025, but I guess it could happen yeah. in the second half of the year. But then again, who knows? OpenAI could drop some new thing that we have no idea is even being worked on that right. blows our minds. Right, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. We'll, right. we'll keep tabs on it. Cool. Keep letting everybody know. All right. Talk to you later. <laughs> see you, Bert. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We'd be grateful. You can visit our website at bluemargin.com for more insights and resources. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.